Hello, and welcome to this live English lesson about how to talk about the police in English. We will do this for about the next hour. And after this hour, you will learn a whole lot of new ways to talk about the police and other things that might have something to do with the police. We'll talk about badges. We'll talk about getting booked. No, it's not something you read. I hope you are ready to learn some English. Let me just say hello to a few folks who stopped by. Where is it? There we go. John, hope you're doing well. Freddie Wolf is here. Freddie Wolf, how are you doing? Thomas, good to see you in here. All right, Legend Deal. Yeah, you may be new. If you are just joining me for the first time, don't forget to subscribe. Maybe hit that like button. It definitely helps other people find the English lesson. It's going all right. Hope it's going all right with you. Somebody is texting me. What, is this important? Probably not. Okay. Not too important. I'll take care of that later. All right, so we are going to be talking about the police today. The American police may be different in other parts of the world, so I am going to focus on just the American police. How about that? And the first, oh, hang on. Before we go too far, I would definitely like to give a shout out to Dan F., Tanya, who cannot be with us today, but I am sure she will watch on replay, and Omron. They all left super chats, super thanks. Thank you, Omron, Tanya, Dan. I have a little something for you. And it goes a little something like this. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. All right. So thank you so much for that. Let's get to our first word. It is a, a formal word. And it's something you might hear the police called. Police officer. So a police officer is one person who works for the police department or the police force. We will talk more about that in a minute. But a police officer is a person who works for the police department. Here's a sentence using police officer. Take a look at that picture. Looks like there is a, a police officer in a very big city and poor little girl she appears to be lost. She does not know where her parents are. So let's read this sentence here. The police officer helped the lost child find her parents. Yeah, so the police do all sorts of things. They try to help with crime, but sometimes it's just a little girl is lost in the big city and that police officer in English we might say he is kneeling down to talk to that little girl. Kneeling down. He is on one knee. Kneeling. It has a K in it for some reason. Next one here. Look at this. You might hear this term as well. Cop. Cop. But be careful. Some police officers do not like that term. It is slang. It is a lot shorter than police officer, cop. Cop is slang for a police officer. Some officers do not like this name. Some like it, some don't. But here's a sentence using cop. Cops work hard to keep the city safe. And if you look at that picture closely, that is a, a police officer from Lewiston, Maine, one of my favorite cities. Probably a city you've never heard of unless you followed the channel for a little while because sometimes I do English lessons. Look at this next one. Got a sentence for you. Chief. 
You might hear that in English, chief. Well, what does that mean? Chief. A chief is like the boss of the police department or the police force. So when you're talking about all the police officers in a city, you will hear police department or police force. And there's usually one boss. And that boss is a chief. Look at this man. He looks like he has a little bit of power there with his arms folded. He's got a badge on, a walkie talkie. We will talk about those two terms in a little bit. But look at all the medals he has on him. He's got, looks like he's won a bunch of awards. A chief is like the boss of the police department or the police force. And I'm sure the people who are police chiefs, or, or you might hear the chief of police. So she is the police chief or she is the chief of the police. Both work. Chief of police makes many important decisions every day. Yeah, and police, you will never hear polices. No, the plural of police is, is police. So you can have a police officer or you could say the police of the city. Police, not please. It's a little different. Please, could you pass me some water, please? And then we have police, police. Taking a sip. There are 25 people watching right now. Maybe this is not a popular topic. I thought it would be, but my mood's here. Hope you're doing well. Adem, Abbas, good to see you. All right. Hey, but my mood says it's an important topic. Well, I'm glad you think so. I thought it was too. So you will be able to talk about the police a little bit better after this. AI is more helpful. AI is more helpful than teachers, maybe? AI is more helpful, but it seems like too fake. Yeah, I've been having a lot of fun making these pictures for the English lesson by using AI. Sometimes they do a great job. Sometimes they do a very poor job, especially when it comes to spelling. AI cannot spell, at least in English, maybe in other languages, but not in English. How are you? Love the profile picture. Mr. Brew, hello. Ramon, Brazil is in the house. Love it. And guess what? I will be in Brazil's house in about two months. All right, thank you for the lesson. I appreciate it. Joel, good to see you in here. All right, Freddie Wolf has a question. The chief of the police, oh, sorry, the chief of the big cities is called sheriff? But what's the chief of a small one? Well, it's different. Where I live, um, is very confusing. We have state police. So my state of Maine, we have city police. It's the Lewiston police department. That's the city. But where I live, the sheriff is for the county, which is in the middle of state and city. So I hope that makes sense. Like the sheriff's department, they do a lot with like trials. So they're more for like the county. That's how I, that's how I, oh, need motivation. Well, you're in the right place. Yulia, hope you're doing well. Good to see you in here. Should we get back to the lesson? Should we get back to the lesson? We were just talking about the chief of police or the police chief and how many decisions they have to make each day. You might also hear this detective detective so i'm going to make the picture bigger and get rid of this so we can talk about it ai designed this image for me and it looks like it's a crime scene 
that yellow tape in the picture, we would call that police tape or crime scene tape. And it looks like those little yellow squares are talking about where the evidence is. Maybe it's a bullet. Maybe it's an article of clothing. And you can see in the picture, there are some police officers who are in uniform. We might say they are uniformed officers. But there are other police officers there that are wearing normal clothes, like civilian clothes, you might say. They're, ve they're dressed very nicely with nice pants, maybe a tie. Well, those people are probably detectives. What is a detective, you might ask? I have a sentence or two for you to explain it. A detective is a police officer who solves crimes. They might not wear a uniform, and they've probably been on the force for a long time. They are not a rookie. We will talk about what a rookie is in the next slide. But here is a sentence using the word detectives. Detectives look for clues after a crime has been committed. We use that verb all the time, commit, when you're talking about crimes. So if somebody goes into a bank and tries to steal the money, we can say they committed a crime. Rookie. I just mentioned rookie. What is a rookie? Let me make this picture bigger. If you look at this picture, you can see there are five police officers in the picture. The four in the back seem like they might be a little bit older. So we might call them veterans. Veterans, yes. You can use that for police officers. You can use it for teachers. So I am a veteran teacher. I have been teaching English for 21 years. But a rookie, it might be their first year on the job. You will also hear that with sports athletes. Someone who joins a team for the first time is a rookie. The people who have been playing longer, they are veterans. So in this picture, the police officer in the front he looks a little younger, and it is possible that he is a rookie. A rookie is a police officer who doesn't have a lot of experience. Maybe it's their first year on the force. I would like to uh, check the chat, see if there is anything going on in there. We still only have 36 people watching. I thought there would be more. Maybe you are watching on replay. If you are, hello. All right, I see some questions about other things besides the police. So I'm going to just stick with the questions about the police. All right, are these pictures, Manuel, good to see you. Are these pictures generated by AI? Why, yes, they are. Yes, they are. And I mentioned earlier, sometimes, AI really messes up. We will see some spelling mistakes later on. Dem, hope you're doing well. Danny is here. She's from France. Good to see you. All right, everybody's here. Great to see you. We just talked about rookie, All right? Now let's talk about some of the things you might see on a police officer's uniform. The first thing I would like to talk about is badge. In the picture, don't look at the spelling. AI cannot spell. But look at the picture. That thing in English is called a badge. Right below there, a badge is a metal sign police wear to show their officers. And a lot of badges I think almost everyone in the United States, if a police officer is wearing a badge, they also have a badge number. So at the bottom, a badge has a number on it. Every police officer 
has a badge number. And sometimes you might see on TikTok or, or YouTube or, or whatever, you might see somebody filming a police officer and they are mad at that officer. They may say, hey, I need your badge number. And the police will give them that number. What about this? Busted. You may not know this verb in English. Busted. But when talking about the police and crime, busted is another way to say getting caught for doing something wrong. And in the picture, looks like this person might have been driving Let's say drunk. Maybe they had too many alcoholic drinks. They got into a car and then they got busted for drunk driving. It looks like that man can barely stand up. He actually might be missing part of his leg, but that's AI sometimes for you. They miss things, but I do like the colors in this picture and I do like what it's showing. It is showing somebody being busted by the police. Well, how about this one? This is a little different. There's a picture here. He got busted for stealing money from his job. And for some reason, there is a typo in there. Let me fix that. It says for stealing, for stealing. That's not good. Now this is perfect, I think. This is perfect. All right. He got busted for stealing money from his job. Look at how sneaky he looks. He's looking out, making sure nobody is watching. But he's got money all over the desk. Yeah, this person is probably stealing money from their job. If you ever hear the word embezzlement, it's probably what that means. Somebody is hiding money from their workplace embezzling money. It's not good. How about this? I want to teach you red handed, red handed. It's an idiom has nothing to do with anyone's hand being red, but the color red. But if you look at the picture here, well, police is spelled wrong. So don't look at the words, but look at the money, look at the police, and then look at the people in the middle. I think they just tried to rob a bank, but they got caught doing it. While they were robbing the bank, the police caught them. We would call that red-handed. Here's a sentence. The bank robbers were caught red-handed. Red-handed means they were busted while actually committing the crime. Another example I like, getting caught red-handed. There's no violence here at all. There are no guns. Let's say a little kid. They have a sweet tooth. They like snacks. And their parents told them, you cannot have any more snacks. So they go into the kitchen. When they think nobody is looking, they reach into the cookie jar, pull out a cookie, and their mom is standing right there watching them. They got busted. Red handed got caught red-handed it's happened to me before how about this one arrested you might hear this when talking about the police in english it is a verb arrested is a verb that means taken to jail by the police because of a crime and we will talk all about what might happen if you get arrested in the United States. Here's a hint. You will probably have your fingerprints taken and you will probably have to take a mug shot. More about that in just a minute. Let's check the chat to see if I am missing anything. It looks a oh, Harry. What is going on? It's time to learn some English. Harry, I hope you are doing well embezzle i manual i don't think that is spelled correctly embezzle hey siri how do you spell embezzle i don't know if you can see that but that's how you spell 
and bezel. You might have the E and the L mixed up. Harry 300 is here. Welcome. Emir, hope you're doing well. All right. Master on. Hi, Mr. Brent. How do we call police in lower or higher ranks? I mean, based on the rank they are called, for example, officer, etc. Yeah. Um, you might hear, we don't need that picture. You might hear rookie. Like I mentioned before, that is someone who is brand new to the force. You could hear veteran. You could hear chief. They're in charge of everything. Detectives. They are higher than regular police officers. You sometimes have a lieutenant in there. Maybe another name for a police officer. But yeah, hopefully that helps. Danny, to be arrested, is it the same as to be in custody? No, no. If you're arrested, you definitely did something wrong. If you are in police custody, they could be doing that to protect you from yourself or to protect you from somewhere else, someone else. So to be in custody, they sometimes are interchangeable, but not always. So if somebody is arrested, they've committed a crime. The, if they are in custody, it could be for a couple of different reasons. Great question. All right. We have some Cyrillic script there. I'm sorry. I can't say your name, but I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us here. Where were we? We were just talking about being arrested. Yeah. So let's talk about this. Arrested and also police custody, just like Danny was mentioning. So arrested is a verb that means taken to jail by police because of a crime. So you will also hear this. They are in police, police custody. You might hear in police custody if a person has been arrested and is still with the police. We're going to talk about booked in a minute. So maybe they will be released without being booked if, if they're just in custody. Um, that word custody also has something like maybe like ownership or guardianship because if a, if a couple gets divorced, they do have to worry about who gets custody of the child. That's another way you will hear custody. So maybe like the mom gets the child for the week and then the the dad will get custody of the child on the weekends, something like that. Hopefully that works. And speaking of embezzlement, she was arrested for embezzlement and taken to the police station. So she must have been stealing money somehow. And it's not from a bank. You would say robbing a bank, but embezzlement, it's probably stealing from your workplace. Something else you might hear when talking about the police in English is this thing we call a warrant, a warrant. A warrant is a piece of paper from a judge that lets the police do something. So in the United States, police officers cannot just walk into your house. They need something called probable cause, which means like maybe somebody in the house is injured, they can enter that way, but if they don't have probable cause, they want to search the house for evidence, they have to get a warrant to search the house, and they can only get that from a judge. Even searching somebody's car, if the police, the police can ask you, hey, may I search your trunk, you can say no, you can say yes. But if you say no, the police can't just go into the trunk of your car to search. Now, if you say no, and they think there is something in there that they should see, that will give them probable cause 
they can get a warrant to search your, your trunk. So hopefully that helps. And here's a sentence with warrant. There is a warrant out for the man's arrest. Hopefully that helps. I'm going to take a sip of water and play a little something to remind you to subscribe, like, all that stuff. If this lesson is helping your English improve, don't forget to tap that like button and share it with a friend who's learning English. Yeah, doing all that stuff, liking, commenting, subscribing, it really helped the channel. Hey, I know this guy. Filippo has been a channel member for 10 months. Do you know Carabiner? If not, ask Siri. I do know what a carabiner is. Yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with police though, does it, Filippo? I usually hear about it when... Because I said, hey Siri, she said something. Uh, but it's mostly used, I think, for, for hiking. A carabiner? Or maybe like attaching some keys to a backpack? That's how we would use a carabiner, I think. Freddie Wolf... You have been a member, a member for 10 months. Got a little something for you, even though you're not a new member. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. All right. Thank you, Filippo. If you would like to become a channel member and get bonus English lessons, and once a month we do a members chat, there is a link at the top to become a member. All right, Manuel, I saw this. Surveillance. Custody could mean surveillance. No, 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 no. Custody means the police have you. Surveillance means the cops are watching you. Okay, so maybe they have tapped your phone. You also need a warrant for that. But if somebody's phone is tapped... That means the police can hear what you're saying. So surveillance is, is different from custody. Freddy Wolf. In old Western movies, we could see lots of displays on the walls or trees. Wanted, dead, or alive. Thousand dollar reward. It's true. You might see that. Wanted, dead, or alive. Mega, hope you're doing well in India. Pakistan is in the house. Welcome. I've been watching a lot of videos from Pakistan. Yeah, it looks like beautiful mountains in Pakistan. Islamabad seems like a great place to visit. Lahore seems great. All right. Harry says, they got caught red-handed. Is it the same? They got caught lacking? To get caught, to get caught lacking is natural? No, I've never heard that term. To get caught lacking. No, I'm sorry. Maybe it's British English. Oh, gosh. Okay, so it's the name of the police in Italy. Cabrabinieri. How's that for pronunciation? Cara, Carabinieri. Yeti, I think. That almost looks like yesterday. Is that, was it Yeti? It's like yesterday, I think, in, in Italian. All right. Perfect, Mega. Thank you for joining us here. 42 people are watching. Welcome. We need to get back to the lesson, don't we? We were just talking about a judge and how a judge can issue a warrant. Here's a little more information on what the police can do and what they can't do. The police cannot enter a person's house without a warrant. Remember, a warrant is a piece of paper from a judge that lets the police do something. How about this? Miranda writes, you will definitely hear this when talking about somebody getting arrested. If somebody gets arrested, they need to have their Miranda rights read to them. What does that mean? Right here. It's kind of long. 
Miranda rights are the rights police tell you when you are arrested. One of the first things the police will say is you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do can be used against you. And I did forget a quotation mark. Look at the end of that where it says you. Somebody is saying that. So I need to add a quotation mark at the end. And it always goes outside the period. So that is written perfectly now. Miranda writes, are the rights police tell you when you are arrested? One of the first things police will say is you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do can be used against you. And at that point, you might hear the person being arrested say, I want a lawyer. And that is one of your rights. When you get arrested in the United States, you have the right to a lawyer to help you with the, all the legal stuff that you might need. Also, you don't have to say anything. You can say you plead the fifth. Maybe you have heard of that, but it is a right of all people in the United States, the right to remain silent. I plead the fifth. That means you don't want to get yourself into more trouble by saying the wrong thing. Fingerprints. If you get arrested, you might get booked and you might have to have your fingerprints taken and you might have to take a mug shot. Let's talk about what some of these things are. We use the term booked when your information is written down at the police station. She got booked at the police station. Her fingerprints were taken and she had to take a photo. Right there, right there is a close up of your fingerprints. It's what we call it in English, those little lines at the tip of your finger, we call fingerprints. And you might have to put them on a sheet like this. It's a piece of paper that has people's fingerprints. Now, I haven't been arrested ever, but now I don't think they do the paper thing anymore. I think it's more digital. Like you put your, your finger on, on a screen like that, and it will take your fingerprints so you don't get ink all over the tips of your fingers. Another thing you might have to do if you are arrested and booked is take a mug shot. And right there, right there, we call that a mug shot. We call that photo taken at the police station a mug shot. Some people will call their face a mug it's a very old term. I mean, this is also a mug right there. Also a mug or a coffee cup. But sometimes you'll hear somebody's face being called a mug. And then, and then they have to take a mug shot. In case they ever escape, the police will know what they look like. How about this? His mug shot was front page news. If something is front page news, a lot of people are talking about it because every news channel is covering it. Yeah. We had a very famous politician a couple months ago take a mugshot. I think it made world news. Let's talk about this bail. So if you get arrested, you will probably have to go to trial. You will probably have to sit in front of a judge and you have to tell everybody why you shouldn't be arrested or you may have to go to prison. So another term you might hear when talking about the police's bail. Bail is money paid to leave jail until your court date. So if you get arrested, everybody also has the right to a speedy trial, but sometimes in the United States, it takes a long time 
to get to your trial. So you can post bail. That's the verb we would use. That means you give the police some money and then you can go home until your trial. Now, a lot of times, if the crime is really, really bad, like that person cannot get bail. There might be no bail for that person. How about this sentence? Thanks to his brother, he made bail and was allowed to go home until his trial. And in the picture, it does look like this person is handing over some paper in the back. You can see there's a, a poster on the wall that says posting bail. It looks like that man, it could be his brother. He's like, hey, here's the paperwork. Here's some money. Let my brother out of jail. We will talk about um, the difference between jail and prison in a minute also. He was able to post bail and go home until his trial started. Before we move on, let me check the chat. See if I am missing anything. Looks like Mode Eggs is here. Welcome. Welcome. Look at this. Freddie Wolf. This might not be enough to pay the fee to avoid myself going in jail. Well, that's a super chat. Freddie Wolf, thank you so much. Every little bit helps. Yeah, I will be taking some trips this spring and summer. Super chats are awesome. Thank you. I have a little something for you. Hopefully, hopefully you never get arrested. Give me a call if you do. Maybe I can bail you out. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. A little sip of water there. Thank you, Freddie Wolf. That is awesome. Looking through the chat just to see if I missed something. Oh, Adem. How many followers do you have in Turkey? I don't know. But I will be visiting Turkey in a couple months. Maybe I will meet some. Oh, yeah, some cities in Pakistan. Sure, I do know. Yeah. Islamabad, Lahore. There's another one I'm, I'm forgetting. Might be the biggest one. But, yeah, I would love to go to Pakistan at some point. Bodeg says, hey, you want to talk about the police and maybe get in trouble? Let's go. Trouble is my middle name. Just kidding. There's no need to run my priors. All right. Um, since since Mode Eggs uh, mentioned run my priors, he's talking about prior arrests. So prior crimes. So if a criminal has priors, that means they've committed crime in the past. Sometimes if the crime is really bad, like you can't get bail because you've been arrested so many times. All right. Oh, Harry's wondering, who is Miranda? I don't know exactly, but it comes from a person's last name. And there was a trial that it was well before I was born. I think at the beginning of the 1900s, there was a person, Miranda, and... It went to the Supreme Court, so that's why they're named Miranda after somebody's last name. But I don't know exactly where they came about it, because of some trial. If you if had a fragrant manual, I think you mean flagrant, flagrant, because a fragrance or Fragrant means it's like it smells nice. Oh, that's a fragrant smell. Um, but flagrant means it's obvious. Obvious. It was not done in secret. So hopefully that helps. Oh, Hafez, it feels like a very advanced English lesson. Yeah, I think anytime you talk about legal terms, it does get pretty advanced. The next one won't be too bad. We're going to talk about handcuffs. All right, Freddie Wolf, play Monopoly. I don't Monopoly's a long game, huh? 
no, yeah, yeah. I've never been arrested, Adem. I've never been arrested. And I don't want to brag about that. You shouldn't get arrested. Uh, if anybody knows that American comedian, his name is Chris Rock. And he has this bit about people bragging about things they're just supposed to do. Like you shouldn't brag to other people. You shouldn't show off to other people saying, guess what? I've never been arrested. Yeah, You're not supposed to get arrested. Don't brag about that. I love Chris Rock. Oh, no. I uh, got plans to ride hot air balloons in Turkey. No. Um, they do that in Cappadocia, right? I would love to visit, but I'm only going to be in Istanbul for three or four days. So unfortunately, I won't get out to Cappadocia. All right. Yes, it's true. Mode Egg says we also use that verb mug, meaning like to rob somebody on the street. Yeah. Hey, I got mugged last night. Hopefully the internet is fine. I just got a message saying maybe not the best internet. Well, it looks like it's back. Looks like it's back. Let's talk about the next thing here. Handcuffs. I think that picture says it all. Most police officers will carry handcuffs on them. Handcuffs are those metal rings put on wrists to stop people from running away or punching police officers. Yeah, oftentimes one of the first things that will happen to you if you get arrested is that you will be handcuffed. Can be a verb also, handcuffed. Cuffed and stuffed. Have you heard of this term? He was cuffed and stuffed into the back of the patrol car. What's the next picture? Is it somebody? Yeah, I do have a picture of what could be somebody getting cuffed and stuffed. Most of the time, if you are arrested by the police, you will be put into the back seat of the car. But it looks like AI doesn't know that. Maybe they are getting to ride in the front seat. But cuffed and stuffed means handcuffed, put into the car. How about this? Another thing that police officers will use is something called a patrol car. You might hear police car as well. Here's a sentence below. You might hear patrol car or squad car for the cars that police drive, or you may simply hear police car. And that looks like it is in the beautiful city of San Diego, California, where the sun is always shining. They very rarely have rainy days. San Diego seems like a beautiful place to visit. How about this? The police car flew down the road with its lights flashing. The police car flew down the road with its lights flashing. And it looks like that car has pulled over. It is against the law to stay in the road if there is a police car coming down the street with its lights flashing and their sirens on. Sirens make the loud noise. So drivers in the United States need to pull over or get closer to the edge of the road so the police car can pass. How about this? If a police car has flashing lights, it might also have on its siren, which makes a loud noise to let drivers know to get out of the way. Get out of the way. We have business to do. Don't slow me down. Somebody is committing a crime or they need help. All right, looks like Mode and Harry are talking back and forth. What's this? Nastaran? Hope I'm saying your name correctly. One time, oh my gosh, one time when I was going home, a man on a motorcycle attacked me? Oh my gosh. Luckily, the police arrested him. Oh, somebody besides the police. Oh man, I'm sorry that happened to you. That can be super scary. Where did this happen, I wonder? Oh, I almost I almost put this on. Um, 
How do you call the piece of metal mounted to the front of the police car? So that thing. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Let me get rid of that. Hang on. Make this bigger. Yeah, we might call that the grill at the front or like a battering ram, maybe. But a lot of police cars do have that when they have to ram other cars. So their car won't get quite as damaged. All right. Forgiven. All It's horrible, though. That, got, that has to be so scary. So scary. Omron. I mentioned you earlier. You left a, a super thanks during the middle of the week. Thank you so much. And there's also another super chat from Omron. Let me find what I, I play for you. Omron, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. You are very generous, Omron. Thank you so much. Hopefully this English lesson is helping you learn how to talk about the police just in case you have to. I hope everybody watching here and on replay and on the podcast, I hope you never have to talk about the police when it comes to you being arrested. But if you do, hopefully this lesson helped a little bit. I'm not offering legal advice either. No. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is a nightstick. AI made this for me. It looks pretty good. A lot of police officers carry what we call a nightstick with them. They might have to use it on criminals or they might have to use it for protection. But let's talk about this. I will make the picture even bigger. Police officers may need to use a nightstick from time to time. A nightstick is a heavy stick police use for protection. That's not the only word though for that thing in the police officer's hand. A nightstick is sometimes called a billy club or a baton. Baton is how you say that in English. I know it's French, right? Baton, a stick. But in, in English, we say baton, baton. There is a city in the United States. It's a French name. Baton Rouge is how we pronounce it, but it literally means red stick in French. Baton Rouge, I think is how you say it in French. Rouge, red, rouge. Got to work on that French accent. How about this sentence? The officer carried a nightstick on every one of her shifts. Shifts. That is the amount of time a police officer will work they might work the day shift or they might work the night shift. Excuse me. They might work the day shift or they might work the night shift. Come on, voice. Don't fail me now. Just to be clear, some officers work the night shift, not night stick. Nightstick is what they carry in their hands, but they might work the night shift. You can imagine a lot of crimes being committed in the dark at night. So I think the officers might be more busy on the night shift than they are in the day shift. I could be wrong though. I could be wrong. The next thing I would like to teach you is something called a body camera. It's what we say in English. It's literally a camera you wear on your body. And most police officers will wear this to protect themselves. If they are ever accused of wrongdoing, they have the camera there. And also it can be used as evidence. If somebody is resisting arrest, you might hear that term. If a police officer is trying to arrest somebody, but they are fighting back, punching, kicking the officer so they can't put on the handcuffs. We would call that resisting arrest. Let's look at this picture here. Here's a sentence for you. Most police officers also wear a body camera. 
which is a camera police wear to record what happens. Looks like all of those police officers are wearing body cameras, at least one. But it looks like um, two of the officers might have on two body cameras. What's the next one? All right here. SWAT. You might hear that term, SWAT team. It is an acronym. An acronym in English means the word. Let's talk about SWAT right there. That word, all of the letters in the word stand for another word. I'm not sure what SWAT means. You will very rarely hear somebody say all of the words in SWAT, but a SWAT team is a special police force with big guns and armor used for the most dangerous situations. And in the picture, that definitely looks like a SWAT team. They have on more protection or they have on more armor. They are definitely carrying bigger guns. And it even looks like they might have a light attached to their helmet. Yeah, so SWAT teams, only for the most dangerous situations. What about this? Jail and prison. A lot of people in the United States will use these terms interchangeably, jail and prison, but they are not the same. So let's talk about how they are different. Jail is not the same as prison, but both are where people are held when arrested. Jail is for short periods of time or waiting for trial. Prison is for long periods of time after a trial. If somebody has been, see, if a person goes to trial and the jury finds that that person did commit the crime, they will have to go to prison. I think prison's a little rougher than just regular old jail. All right, that is the end, the end of the English lesson. Just check in the chat. <clears throat> Nastaran, hope I'm saying your name correctly. Pepper spray. I did not put that on the lesson, but a lot of officers do carry pepper spray, which if they spray it into the eyes of another person, it will really hurt. It will blind them. They will not be able to see for a little while. But police officers are probably more likely to use a taser. It's another term I did not talk about. But a taser would be a non-lethal way to control a criminal or a suspect. So non-lethal means it's not going to kill them. Like a bullet. It's lethal. A taser, in most cases, is not lethal. Don't know, Freddie Wolf. I don't know why it is called a nightstick because a police officer could use it at any time they're on a shift. All right. I don't know. Mode eggs is probably stirring the pot. That is a term we use when somebody is trying to cause trouble. Oh yeah, mode is probably stirring the pot. Yeah, it's just like any any profession. There are good cops, bad cops, good police officers, bad police officers. Sometimes the police can be friendly and help you if you have some problems. They don't always have to arrest you. Yeah, and if you saw the first slide that I showed for this live lesson, a police officer was helping a little girl find her parents. Thank you so much. Special weapons and tactics? Sounds right. Tactics are a way that you do something. So maybe entering a building a certain way, they probably have tactics for that. Uh, Mode is wondering, do you use the phrase earn your stripes in everyday speech? Yeah, I have heard it in everyday speech. And it just means somebody like worked really hard 
to get something and it was it was probably took a while like rookie police officer maybe first day on the job and they have like a really dangerous situation like you could uh say that they earned their stripes when we had that picture of the chief they had a lot of medals on them and sometimes officers will get like literal stripes on their uniform to show how long they've been with the force so yeah i would say that you could all right yeah alcatraz was a prison in the u.s i've seen alcatraz it is off the coast of san francisco and california but i did not take a tour i didn't have enough time because you need a boat it's rather expensive and at the end beaumont welcome at the end your name will be in soap mode your name will be in an upcoming english lesson because i'm talking about m foods at the end what did you say did you say macaroons i think maybe rubber bullets yep they might use that at the end there is always the replay if you're late uh mode Second question, is there a difference between pepper spray and mace? If there is, I don't know the difference. I know that they are both used in very similar ways. It's supposed to make the person not be able to see. So if there is a difference in English, I use those terms interchangeably. Uh oh, special weapons, anti-terrorism? That could be, I thought, I thought tactics was part of the acronym SWAT. Yes, we got the Super Bowl this weekend. 49ers are playing the Chiefs. I will definitely be watching that tomorrow. Jamie and I will be watching the Super Bowl for, for sure. Yeah. It's also my daughter turns 18 tomorrow, which is kind of crazy. Has a plum job. It's more comfortable. Yeah, we, I don't know if we would use that often in English. I think if something is a plum job, it's, it's kind of easy. Yeah. So uh, yeah, my job is definitely easier in some ways than the police. I have a great amount of respect for police officers mode. Thank you. And I think that's going to do it for this week. Yeah. So thank you all for, let's see, we had some super chats here. Filippo, thank you for being a member. Freddie Wolf, thank you for the super chat. Omron, thank you for your super chat. If you would like to become a member, get bonus English lessons, there is a link right at the top of the chat. Once a month, twice a month, we will have members chats before the live stream. Gold members sometimes come on camera to speak one-on-one -on -one with me. Sometimes it's a, a small group. I think we've had five people, me and four other people on camera at once. So it is a small group and it's good to practice your English speaking. I think this is where I say adios amigos. Thank you so much for all the support. See you next week, I think, right? Next week, man-made disasters. I'm already working on it. We will be talking about Chernobyl, Fukushima, Three Mile Island. Should be a lot of fun. Man-made disasters. All right. Adios, amigos.